stuff. Mm-hmm. Deputy Minister for Economic Management and the Minister of Finance and Development Planning, um, the United Nations family, UNDP, that is actually one of our, our strong and trusted uh, partners. The European Union has been involved with a lot of the development works in our country. I represent this here. Um, the United States Aid uh, Agency for International Development um, use it representatives who are here present. We also want to recognize the World Bank and that has supported a lot of the development works in our country. Uh, see a representative here, the African Development Bank, IMF, um, the ministries and agencies, representatives who are here, ministers coming down to Maritas, the civil society organizations, private sector uh, representatives here, um, Minister Colbert from the Department of Budget and Planning and the Ministry of Finance, uh, members of the Fourth Estate, and all other um, work from the government or from the private sector, those who have come to great education, would like to work on you. Today is a great day, and it's great because we all made it great. The process that started in uh, 2019, when there were concerns from both actors in the public sector, as well as uh, the private sector and our development partners looking at the, uh, the state of the economy then. And then we decided that we gather here uh, to talk about what was happening uh, so that we all together proffer uh, solutions. And that has taken a few years and we are part to the, to actually Look at what progress we made. We all agree that these were challenges, and deep, uh, we, we had a role models to how to address those challenges, giving different actors with uh, specific 
responsibilities as well as to find solutions to the many problems that we all identified. Today we've come to look at uh, the report that a consultant was hired to UNDP um, to do a mapping of the different progress we made over the last few years and even identify the gaps that we the remaining um, outstanding challenges uh, from the National Economic Dialogue held in 2019. So we want to work on all of you. This program today is going to be around the Chief Active. Uh, we're going to have presentations that will be done by both our development partners. We have the World Bank here. So uh, we have a sound evaluating, but then at the same time, we want an external evaluation. So our partners will be telling us the progress we made, challenges we made, how we have rather, and that way, as we leave from here, as to what we can do uh, to see how we address some of the challenges that have been identified by our partners and even the consultant. So once again, on behalf of uh, the Minister of Finance, and it's represented here by the able to the to the report. So it's a whole day event, uh, but our report will be validated by us based on our comments, you know, uh, the suggestions we will make, and then in the end we we'll call it a final document. Uh, and then we we'll now identify the challenges that we're actually going to be working on. So again, we want to work on you, work on and work on. Thank you very much. Uh, because we had a lot of 
inflows uh, coming because please receiving at least some quarter time uh, assistance. So for all of these sharks in 2018 when we took uh, all this as a team we were faced with the reality of what we needed. Minister of Finance led by our own able minister Samuel D. Twell Jr. who would actually love to be here today but uh, due to other responsibilities he's also under the of the country uh, working on the Arab government. The team took a strategic approach to reform our macroeconomic system consistent with domestic and international best practices. And uh, that strategic approach allowed us to engage more stakeholders in the economy, including our domestic stakeholders and our international stakeholders, World Bank, IMF, African Development Bank, EU, USAID, UN, and all those partners. And we believe that as a team to make the necessary progress required for Liberia, there was a need for massive reforms there was a need for massive reforms in broad areas. And the reforms focused on a few things. One was restoring macroeconomic stability, because that was key. In 2018, 2019, we see that uh, the exchange rate, and, I mean, I mean we, 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 we were getting frustrated at some point, because when you then listen to the radio, even those who they didn't go to economic classes were telling us you know, what was happening to the micro situation in Liberia. So you hear someone to take the phone and say, well, the economy of Liberia is in the toilet. And you know, and, and the guys don't know what they're doing. So there were, there were a lot of pressure on us as a team to deliver on stabilizing the microeconomic situation of the country. We also, along the reform corridor, pay attention to ensuring that uh, we have a fiscally sustainable growth pathway. So along our microstructure, we, we wanted to make sure that uh, any program we're developing, the policy programs we're developing to interface into that situation, that our fiscal and growth pathway will be clearly defined and will allow the country to uh, to excel and, and to get out of the, the, the pressures that we had, the shocks that we had. The third thing we look at in the reform basket was to, to look at also addressing weaknesses in the public sector, including governance, rule of law, and, and others. Uh, as you will see that these are very key components to our economic uh, sustainability. To have the economy moving and and, and, and working the way it should work, uh, public service, public sector governance, uh, and institutions have to play the role uh, that they have to play to deliver. And the last component on the uh, reforms we focus on was providing basic social services and, and, and ensuring that uh, the appropriate infrastructure programs were undertaken. So if you look there, one of the president's agenda, uh, there's more emphasis on infrastructure, making sure that uh, we're doing more in roles, we're doing uh, things with uh, education, health, uh, while at the same time looking at uh, uh, providing appropriate uh, supporting services public and improving efficiency and service delivery at institutional levels. So you see that there's a lot, there was a lot of pressure on us as a team to ensure that we made these things to happen. And, and as a government, our president uh, leading the, the board uh, continuously challenged us to ensure that we brought all the stakeholders around
the table to address these things because the economy is everyone. The economy is never the government. Uh, the economy is never the private sector. Uh, neither the CSO. The economy is made of the combination of all of us who play you know, in the space of, of, of the country. So that includes the public sector, the private sector, uh, of course, interfacing with our development team, civil society, and everyone. So in the reform um, uh, agenda and the strategic approach, there was specific targets on reducing inflation because that was, that was, uh, that was one thing that uh, everyone really talked about. And we know the impact of what inflation is on, on the life of the ordinary people. So there was strategic uh, decision to work on reducing uh, inflation and, uh, and ensuring that uh, our people uh, maximize the potential of their you know, financial power, whatever resource we had. So reducing and adjusting uh, wage, our wage bill was one of the, the issues we, we tried to address because along the the fact that as a government we had the, uh, we had a challenge before us, we had to meet up a wage bill. In fact, during that period, if, if those of you in the public sector will remember, we, we were owing uh, salaries, wages uh, for about three, four months, you know, because it was the, the resources were just not available to be able to to pay salaries. So the government only took a massive. Uh, Issue of reform around the the, uh, the wage, the wage bill, and when we, when we go to the full presentation, uh, you will see some of the reform was necessary because we needed it to strengthen uh, to make sure that uh, uh, public sector was taking care of its uh, its responsibility to the civil service. At the same time, ensuring that uh, we have resources to pay. As a country, you you are respected when you get paid a debt. So you borrow, you pay. You borrow, you pay. So the deliberate action to reform our debt infrastructure uh, at the Ministry of Finance, uh, leading the leading the charge. These deliberate actions allow us to put in place the appropriate policies, mechanisms, measures, you know, and programs to ensure that uh, we're paying both our external and our domestic debt. In fact, to, to the extent that when we took, when we came in the financial sector, and as in the country as, as a whole, severely challenged, and, and all of us, all of us failed. So paying our debt was one thing that we had to do uh, to improve our image as a government. The president on his mandate uh, said, you know what, there's going to be no borrowing from the central bank. Uh, no deficit uh, financing. Uh, work with what you raise. Revenue we generate is what we must spend. And if we are executing and implementing that, then it means that those who need to play their roles, uh, they have to work to, to do what they have to do. So there was a whole issue around Domestic revenue mobilization increasing and the potential end of what we, we raise. Of course, in support, uh, budget being supported also by budget support from our development partners, Square Bank, EU, Africa Development Bank, and others. So, there were the policy of uh, investing in, in, in budgets also came as, as a highlight agriculture, roads. Education, you know, business uh, climate, business environment. So you will see that um, all of these were were all part of the, the process. But even at that, the pressure was still on for the population. The tension was still on for the population because you know these reforms and these developments impact don't come instantly. They come over time. They, they, they take time when you form the policy and 
impact and even the policy. You feel the impact of that policy probably two years down the road, three years down the road, in, in terms of what you're trying to do. Some of the immediate effects you already get in time based on how the system is really strengthened. So in 2019, uh, September, the president hosted the uh, National Economic Dialogue as a way to say, look, uh, we, we listen, we, we know the team is, we have our PAPD, which is our National Development Roadmap. Um, we have our economic framework within that, and we have a direction. But the fact that there's, there's still a lot of conversations up to what should happen, let's hear from the, from the, from the, from the general population, let's hear from, from all sides, let's hear from, from everyone, how and what we think you know we should prioritize in in working uh, to, to get the economy back on course. So we we hosted the National Economic Dialogue in September 2019, uh, and at, at the dialogue we had uh, different different presentations and different conversations. It was truly a dialogue uh, where people said their hearts. You know, people really you know said what they thought the government should do uh, to be able to uh, restore the economy and to, to give hope to the population that things will be better again. So in, in, in doing the dialogue, uh, we, the Ministry of Finance, we, we championed the dialogue, we supported and worked with uh, the consultants that we hired to, uh, to lead the, the technical groupings and discussions. Um, the UNDP at the time also provided uh, resources to us as a government to, to support the activity itself. And, and so we've gone through the exercise, the reports I, I out, I'm sure some of you had the opportunity to see copies of the report for the first time, uh, the report from the dialogue. Um, but we've also been working on what the report's recommendations were. Uh, in addition to our strategic approach as a government to address the economic issues you know, uh, as we identified in, in 2018. So we're here today to, uh, to look at uh, the report out of the economic dialogue uh, uh, report, I would call it, reviewing the progress we've made on the report. Um, we, we will hope that the progress, uh, as, as you saw, uh, as you see the program, it is, it's cross cutting it's, it's looking at um, some of the presentations will come out from our development partners, as Mr. Sal mentioned. Uh, we will give you some updates on what a very strong reform. But the consultant who also led the conversation with who are tracking the report, who are walk through you know, the, the big teams that came out of the report and to say uh, what we see has changed and what we see has still challenges that we want to address. So we're very pleased that uh, you will make time to come to this uh, very important forum. Uh, it, it is, uh, I don't want to say unfortunate, but it's, it's kind of a uh, a conflict that uh, we, we have scheduled the event and then it coincides with uh, the commissioning of the Chief Justice today. Uh, so I believe most of the uh, uh, head of entities who would allow to come uh, have to you know, send representatives from the agencies, uh, but they, they also had a, had a very important national event as well. So uh, we believe that the media here uh, will do justice to the discussion uh, um, capturing so that uh, those who need to get the information outside the conversation room here will read the stories online, will read the story or follow the story on the various platforms so that uh, we all can see where we're going, uh, what have we done, what the future looks like uh, for our economy and for five years. So we'll get uh, with a very uh, brief uh, uh, update of our board of view. I will come back to give a little, a little detail on the presentation.
position itself. Uh, I would like to stop here and say thank you for, for coming. Let's, let's uh, put our brain to fire. Let's uh, teach you what the, uh, the report says. Let's hear from you. Uh, because we are the ministry, we are sitting and trying to do what we are doing. But we believe when we hear from you, from different entities and from different opinions, different views as well, it gives us opportunities to even do better and do more. So this is why we are here. We want to thank you. We look forward to very engaging uh, engagements uh, and programs and conversations today. Thank you. Thank you very much.
is the EU and the UNDP. You have to be a long standing partner. Right? You still want to have long standing engagement with you. So, um, next is the civil society. Do we have a representative from the civil society? Always work with us and 
Dumnezeu să ofere apartamente. Și dar challenges nu mă duc aici. Și dar nu challenges am stat în aici. I will tell you I'm making progress. I'm in this. I'm saying you are making progress. You are making progress. And you are making progress. Again, when you're making progress, be careful. Don't make a mistake at that time. If not all the good you have made, you go right back. So thank you. Thank you. I like the way you place it by saying um, we are all members of a community. As such, we are all members of the civil society. That is true. But similarly, we are all members of an economic community. <laughs> if it's like your civil society, diplomatic group, private sector, and we are all members of an economic community. And it is good that we are here and to consolidate this effort. So we move to the next stage by inviting a representative from the private sector. So like the EU post said, the, the private sector need to take note. It is your turn to step up the game. So we interact on the private sector. Thank you. 